I know what you guys are thinking. I've tilled up my yard behind me. And actually, this is just a small bit of it. I'm gonna be tilling up the entire yard. Um, so stay tuned for a special video series that I'll be putting together on what we're doing with our yard and why in the long term, what I'm doing is actually going to be more beneficial for us and help us um, accommodate safe places for our children and nature, keep everybody a little bit separate <laughs> around the house. Anyway, uh, the irony of this is I wanted to talk about no-till farming real quick because the idea of not tilling is, the idea, the concept is that when, we, when you don't till, you allow the microbials and the soil health to improve. You know, the roots of the grass and, and the roots of uh, plants are able to stay into the ground. And when, when we talk about carbon, I'm gonna do a separate video on carbon because people think carbon's this big bad thing. Carbon is the source of life. And so you need to get carbon back into the soil to really build your soil health. And so that's kind of the point of no-till farming. Uh, people who do till, they do this type of thing every single year. And every time you do that, you risk having a lot of this topsoil erode when it rains. And then you also, and it takes time for the soil to recover after you do that. But you're also removing all the vegetation, everything that is helping to create that soil environment. I recently was out filming for Meet My Neighbor Productions at uh, a farm you've seen here a lot, Smithview Farm. What he's doing out there is, in my mind, fantastic, slightly genius. He is, his beef is all grass-fed, grass-finished, and I wouldn't even say grass, more or less legume. The point is that they, they never have to eat grain. And so when you think about food nutrition, when you think about what you're eating, if, if what you're eating has to be nutritious, imagine how that is for the cow if you're eating beef. If the cow eats something nutritious, the beef is more nutritious. When we talk about soil health, we know that biodiversity is extremely important. The more biodiversity we have in our soil, the more natural it is, the healthier the soil is, the more microorganisms there are. And the thing is, is that microorganisms that come from plants require animal microorganisms to feed off of and vice versa. And so you, you have to, when I talk about soil, I often re, uh, talk about it being kind of an aquatic culture and people don't understand what I mean by that. But if you look at a saltwater fish tank, you have to have animal plankton, you have to have uh, plant plankton, you have to have all these different things, the right balances, the right amount and you know diversification for that salt water tank to really thrive you need certain types of fish to complement certain types of fish our soil is no different if it doesn't have that micro diversity uh, the, the cup is only half full in order to fill that cup you really need to bring in uh, things like ruminants and other animals to diversify the biodiversity otherwise it's not technically biodiverse you need different species you could if you do the right rotational grazing or high density grazing program you can restore massive amounts of land and soil very easily um, so one of the things that Jim is doing that I think is very unique and and very cool is that he is grazing his his cows year-round on cover crops so he's growing annual legumes in his fields and the way that he does that is he'll grow, let's say, a winter legume. 
and then he'll put the cows on it and the cows will graze it will eventually graze it down in the spring when they start to graze it down the plant stops growing the, the plant is going dormant because it's an annual and so then he could come over top of that and reseed with a summer annual of the uh building paddock number six, 6.18 acres, about 300 pounds for number six. So I'm gonna be drilling number six today. So I've got it broken down. I'll be drilling uh, uh, oh, these paddocks, six, 10, seven A and seven B. I did 10 Saturday paddock 10. All, uh, all total, 18 bags. Yeah. So I'm gonna be drilling, uh, these are my summer annuals. I'm gonna be doing the millet, pearl millet, exceed 360. And uh, I'm gonna be doing the, the mung beans, which is a legume, and then the uh, sun hemp which is uh, a lagoon. So the mix is, uh, the millet is 20 pounds an acre, the mung beans, uh, 10 pounds an acre, and the sun hemp, 20 pounds an acre. So all that would be uh, 50 pounds uh, all, all total. They're, they're being finished off the really good uh, forage, which always I put a, uh, at least one or two lagoons in there with it, which helps soil development and also uh, helps in the, the crude protein. So they're they're getting 17, 18 percent crude protein on, on forage. So so goes the myth about you got to finish on grain. Uh, yeah. That's just not true. Yeah, you can finish on good quality forage. And he rotates his fields this way. He's got the fields set up with different pastures that grow different types of grazing legumes and grasses. Uh, he does have some non-toxic fescue out there as well. He has some toxic fescue. He's got a good mix of just about everything. So he always has a place to put these cows where they could eat fresh food, stock up on their proteins, and provide a good healthy animal. Now the interesting thing about this concept is that as your soil health improves and you and you start to see that restoration of your topsoil, the the way that nature works with annuals is that eventually that topsoil will start saving the seeds from your annuals. And as uh, you know, as years progress, what will end up happening is that those seeds will start emerging at the right times of year. And so he's got the biodiversity of different plants. Some of these plants are providing nitrogen to the soil. A lot of legumes will provide nitrogen to the soil, uh, which helps 
set the soil up for the summer crops. Um, the plants are dying off in the fields. He's grazing them down to about three or four inches, but then, uh, you know, the rest of the plant material is just going back into the field. The roots are, of the plants are never coming up. He's reseeding right over it. And the cycle will eventually take over on its own if it's if it's continued to be done this way for years to come. In fact, um, I think Jim said it's taken him about 10 years to set up this farm the way that he has it now. And I don't know how long he's been doing a lot of the, the different cover crops that he's been doing because he's experimented with a lot to get the right type of program down. But he, he mentioned to me while I was out there that he was starting to see some annuals just start randomly popping up in pastures that he never even put an annual in because the seeds were able to carry and then they were able to be sustained over the winter time and then grow and reemerge in the spring. So that's kind of an exciting process when you see it actually coming to a full circle on a farm and you start to see how the soil regeneration is also starting to cause crop regeneration and creating a much healthier environment of diversity with plant life and animal life to in, in the soil. It's it's truly an amazing thing. And I think you know you guys will definitely like that documentary when we get to it. Um, these are all great things for us to learn. I know that when 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 we raise cows and we're just dealing with hay, one of the things that every farmer runs into is the winter time because the hay stops growing and, and eventually it gets eaten down, it gets dried out, it's less nutritious. But when you have the ability to have kind of annual cover crops that replenish themselves and come back year over year, um, then you create a different type of grazing, a more natural type of grazing that also provides the animals with diverse nutrition. We all know that ultimately, you know, we, we hear people talk about going on a strict meat diet or a strict vegetarian diet or this or that or the other thing. But ultimately what has always proven to be the most healthy diets, the best for us is to have a good balanced diet, something that includes a lot of fresh, healthy things. And so these animals need that as well. They need a good balanced diet. Something I haven't told you is that Jim's farm used to be a tobacco farm. It used to be a till farm where they grew tobacco. And when he inherited the farm, he decided he wanted to go this direction with it. And like I said, it's taken about 10 years of trial and error to really put this thing together for him. But it's worked out really well. And um, he's got a great He's got a great farm. It's, it's, it's really coming along. The topsoil is starting to really look good out there, and I think that his efforts are being rewarded. Anyway, so stay tuned for more updates on Meet My Neighbor Productions and our other videos, of course. Um, but I, th I think that, you know, this, this series that is paid for by viewers like you is, is really turning into something nice. We're going to have uh, the, kind of the, the first official season of it coming out this winter time after we've, we've been able to finish filming at all of these farms and have time to sit down and, and plan out the storylines to the farms and put together these documentaries. So it's gonna be a really cool year. And hopefully we could keep this thing going so we could keep traveling and, and visiting farms at more locations across the US. I mean, it, it, there's definitely, you know, a difference between, you know, farmers in different areas and finding, you know, that harmony of, of the uh, similarities between them is such a fun thing to do and 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 i we love going out and meeting all these people and i think you'll enjoy meeting them as well